Hi lovers of literature, last video that I had uploaded in my channel was based on Maya Angelou's poem that is I know why the caged bird sings. I hope you have liked the video, you have commented and you have also subscribed to my channel. So if you have done all these things, let us get into another poem that we will be dealing in depth today. So today the poem that we will be dealing with is very relevant in today's age and context. The title of the poem is The Heart of the Tree. Now the heart of the tree. We all know the tree is considered to be an epitome of something breathing, something living. But then why this emphasis with the word the heart? Because it has been imbued with even more human-like qualities. The word heart indicates how the poet has tried to emphasize on the part that what does the tree contain in its heart. Of course, he tries to tell us that the tree contains only goodness in its heart. Why? He wants to show how barbaric are we, how greedy are we in our needs that we cut down trees mercilessly. But what does it contain in its heart? It contains no vengeance against mankind. It contains no antagonistic feeling towards mankind. It contains only love only giving away to us so that we leave but the tree withers away so the poet tries to present us in a very very negative shade so that we ponder so that we want to change our motives in thinking whether we should cut down a tree or we should not because it is ultimately providing for our needs. So that is what this title signifies. Now of course I have missed on who has written the poem. Now the poem has been written by a 19th century American writer that is Henry Kyler Bonner. He has been more acclaimed for his short stories and is also known for some of his Poems. He was born in August 3rd in the year 1855 in Osrago, New York. His formative years were spent in New York City and his keen observances, of course, made a way or made a vent into his stories. And uh, his, he, publi he published his first novel in the year 19. Uh, sorry, extremely sorry, 1886 and the title of the novel was The Midge. His short stories also gave him considerable popularity as I already mentioned. And two collections were especially popular during his times. Short Sixes and Made in France. These two collections were very very popular in his days. He also wrote some interesting poems, some of which feature in collections like Airs from Already and Elsewhere and Poems. The Tower of Babel is considered to be the most important play. Henry Bonner died quite at an early age of 40 years. That is, he died in the year 1896 on the day 11th of May. So this is what we come to know about the author. I've already mentioned that why the poem is titled as the heart of the tree. The heart signifies something that is one step more that what, than what we human beings con conceive in our hearts. It's like we are portrayed in a negative shed so that we ponder, we think, we reflect, we understand that how are we killing Mother Nature. 
How are we exploiting Mother Nature? Killing is not the word. It's like we are exploiting for our needs, for our greed, for our well-being. But do you think we will be able to live better if we destroy nature? Please think on it. Of course not. So this is what the title and the short sketch of author's life we have dealt with. Now, let us get into the different stanzas of the poem. Okay, first, before getting into the stanzas, what I always do is, I discuss with you on the form of the poem. And another thing, the poem was originally published in the year 1912. So the, all the three stanzas of the poem, the heart of the tree, if you look very closely, starts with a refrain. With the poet asking what the man actually plants who plants a tree. Then he chooses to reply it by himself and shows what a tree means to a humankind and to the nature. Thus proving how great the productivity of a tree is. So he asks a question and he answers it all by himself. This figure of speech of asking a rhetorical question and then answering by himself is known as Hypophora. So the poem opens with a rhetorical question. What does he plan to plant a tree? Now this is the question intended to us. Then he says, he plants a friend of sun and sky. So the question is asked and the answer is given. This is what is done in all of the stanzas. And this figure of speech is known as Hypophora. And if you just see it, the rhythm of the poem is quite simple and quite amazing. The rhyme scheme of the poem is, look very closely, it's A, B, then it's A, B, A, B, B, C, C, A, A. A, B, A, B, B, C, C, A, A for each stanza. And there's a deviation from the celebrated Spenserian stanza. What is a Spenserian stanza? That was used by Spencer, a poet. A nine line stanza with the rhyme scheme of A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, C. This was Spenserian. But Mr. Henry has, Henry Colibano, what he has done is he has deviated from it. And what he has done is, he has made it A, B, A, B, B, C, C, A, A. And Spencerian was C, B, C, C. What he has done is C, C, A, A. So this is the deviation. Though the language is very, very simple, carefully we should locate the words that makes the poem even more expressive and obviously musical and attractive. So this is what the more or less the form is like. I hope you have understood the rhyme scheme. There is a little deviation from Spencerian stanza. Spencerian stanza followed the rhyme scheme. I'm repeating it once more for your uh, understanding. Spencerian stanza was A, B. Now this also has A, B. Then it was A, B, B. We also have A, B, B. Then it was, in Spencerian stanza, C, B, C, C. A deviation is right here. C, B. We have C, C. So you understand. Two are rhyming. C, C means two lines are rhyming. There it wasn't. And then we have A, A. First two lines are actually rhyming. But Spencerian stanza was C, C. So this is the deviation. In the initial lines, there are no deviation. But in the last lines, there is a kind of deviation. So this is what the form and the meter of the poem is like. Now let us get into the stanza number one which reads like what does he plant? He plants a tree. He plants a fr friend. Excuse me. I'm doing it once more. What does he plant to plant a tree? He plants a friend of sun and sky. He plants the flag of breezes free. 
the shaft of beauty towering high. He plants a home to heaven and I. For song and mother croon of birds, in a hushed and happy twilight heart, the treble of heaven's harmony, these things he plants, who plants a tree. Beautiful the stanza is. It's just so meditative. It just talks about how beautiful mother nature is. The poem, as I've said, opens with a rhetorical question. What does he plant who plants a tree? And the rest of the poem is the answer to that question. And the technique I've already discussed of posing a question and immediately following it with an answer is known as hypophora. It's H-Y-P-O-P-H-O-R-A. Hypophora. The technique generates interest in the reader. Why? Because as soon as a question is posed, it makes us think. So that is why. And we see the recurrence of this pattern in the first and the last lines of every stanza of the poem. So the first line is always, what does he plant? Who plants a tree? And the answer gives, is given in a stanza. And the last line ends with, these things he plants, who plants a tree? So this is what it is, basically. Now, we are told that he who plants a tree, plants a friend of the sun, the sky, and a flag of free breeze. So as if he is planting, why, the, why it is a flag? Because the trunk of the tree is so huge, as if, and the leaves are just the flag, the banner. That is hoisted up there. So as if he's planting a banner to the breeze. Because as the breeze uh, just blow through the branches, the, the leaves move. And as if the tree, as if the flag also moves. So there is a connection. There is of course a connection there. So he, what does he plant? He plants a friend of the sun, the sky and a flag. Of the free breeze. The tree is personified as a friend of the sun and the sky as the tree. Being a living entry, sorry, being a living entity provides a companionship to both. Who? To the sun and the sky. The leafy branches of the tree are likened to a flag fluttering in the cool breeze that I've told you and its trunk is likened to a high towering pole that is the shaft. The word shaft is already mentioned there. Shaft of beauty as if it's a pole of beauty. Both instances this flag of breeze and the shaft of beauty are examples of metaphor. Why? Because there is a comparison meant between a flag and the trunk of the tree. And also with the flag, with that of the leaves. So this is the metaphor. Now, he who plants a tree, the next point that comes, this is the first point. What does he plant? He plants a tree. This is what he does. He plants a friend of the sun, the sky, and also a flag of the free breeze. This is what he does. And then comes, he who plants a tree also plants a home nearer to sky. Why? That lines home to heaven and I, where the mother bird softly hums a soothing tune that is croon, mother croon, to her babies after the sunset. It's such a beautiful imagery. It's as if that mother nature is a solace to our bruised hearts. The words home to heaven and hush and happy. Home to heaven. Home, that is H, and to heaven, that is H. Repetition of consonant sounds, we know it is alliteration. And also hush and happy twilight. So hush, H, happy, H. So it is also alliteration. The tree provides a safe home to the birds who can rest on its branches at the end of the day. 
and sing songs which are the treble. What is a treble? It's a high note in music. A treble of heaven's harmony. Both this treble and harmony are musical terms, isn't it? And of course it is used to describe the bird song. These along with the use of words like croon and hush are these all not appealing to your oral senses or the auditory senses that is the hearing part of course it is the words croon hush then that I have said treble and harmony this all gives creates a powerful oral imagery in the poem. So this is what a person plants who plants a tree. He plants a friend of the sun, the sky and a flag of the free breeze. And what does he plant? He also plants a home that is close to heaven where he can hear the mother bird singing songs or lullabies to its babies. Such a beautiful auditory imagery that has been highlighted in the frost stanza. It feels as if Mother Nature is complete in itself. We did not, we did not try to complete it. We just need to observe and appreciate. So he who plants a tree doesn't just plant a tree. He plants someone's friend, someone's safety, isn't it? Giving safety to the birds and someone's reason to be happy and sing a soothing song of peace, serenity and security. That is what Mother Nature provides us. A beautiful sunset or a beautiful sunrise just gives you that solace, that shelter from the rush, the din and the bustle of the city life. So the poet tries to tell us that we should ponder on what are we destroying. If we are cutting down a tree, we are cutting down a friend. We are cutting down on someone's safety. We are cutting down on someone's happiness. So, so then what kind of a person are we? That we need to wander on. So please stay tuned to the next part that is coming up very soon. Stay happy.